In fact, children who tell a teacher at school that they are suffering from gender distress are then often excluded from normal safeguarding procedures. Instead of involving parents and considering wider causes for what the child is feeling and the best course of action, some schools actively hide the information from parents, secretly changing the child's name and pronouns in school, but using birth names and pronouns in communication with parents. One parent of a 15-year-old with a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome said that she discovered that without her knowledge, her daughter's school had started the process of socially transitioning her child and have continued to do so, despite the mother's objections. Another mother said, It's all happened very quickly and very unexpectedly, after teaching at school during Year 7 and Year 8. As far as I can understand, the children were encouraged to question the boundaries of their sexual identity as well as their gender identity. Her friendship group of eight girls all adopted some form of LGBTQ identity, either sexual identity or gender identity. My daughter's mental health has deteriorated so quickly to the point of self-harm. And some of the blame is put on me for not being encouraging enough of my daughter's desire to flatten her breasts and to have puberty blockers. Some parents have indeed, as my honourable friend mentioned, been referred to social services when they've questioned the wisdom of treating their son as a girl or their daughter as a boy. Socially transitioning a child, changing their name and pronouns, treating them in public as the opposite sex is not a neutral act. In her interim report on gender services for children, paediatrician Dr Hilary Cass remarks that while social transition may not be thought of as an intervention or treatment, it is an active intervention because it may have significant effects on the child or young person in terms of their psychological functioning. The majority of adolescents who suffer from gender dysphoria grow out of it. But instead of safeguarding vulnerable children, schools are actively leading children down a path of transition. Now, if a child presented with anorexia and a teacher's response was to hide this from parents, celebrate the body dysmorphia and encourage the child to stop eating, I think that would be a gross failure of safeguarding. For a non-medical professional to make a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, exclude parents and encourage a child to transition is just such a failure. In some schools, children are not only taught about the concept of gender theory, they're also signposted to information about physical interventions. Last year, sixth formers at a grammar school sent a newsletter to girls as young as 11, detailing how to bind their breasts to look more masculine and how surgery can remove tissue if it hurts too much. And schools have played a major role in referrals to gender identity clinics, where children are sometimes set on a path to medical and surgical transition. Now, I'm really pleased to see the announcement from the Health Secretary today that he's commissioning a more robust study into whether treatment at these clinics improves children's lives or leads to later problems or regret. Because schools may think they're being kind, but the consequences of full transition, permanent infertility, loss of sexual function, lifelong health problems are devastating, as has become clear following the case of Kira Bell.